Hi, um, just uh, thought I'd put something up between module four and five. Um, it's dark. Yeah, so it was a very um, big module this week. Again, every module's big module. They're also um, significant. And it's the thinking afterwards for me that really kind of grounds me. Um, you know, the, the module itself, you, you kind of listen to the content and le read the slides. And I make notes at that time and think, oh, that, yeah, that means something, that means something. Then the Q&A kind of pulls all that together in a real, like a real life way, rather than you just being there kind of absorbing info. And then I then go away afterwards and I kind of, not I don't read my notes in detail, but I kind of dip into my notes every now and again. And I spend the week thinking, quite trying to analyse my behaviours and my reactions to things and trying to link them back to um, different aspects of the course that we've learnt um, because actually I think everything about me um, is relate obviously everything I do now every way everything I react to every feeling I have I can relate to something that's happened before and, and some sort of historic um, overspill if you like I was gonna say baggage I'm not gonna say the word baggage we have no baggage we're just um, you know, we were innocent children, um, and um, we got, I feel like, you know, overloaded emotionally with stuff that wasn't ours to carry, but we did carry it, and as a result, um, carried on carrying it. <laughs> um, and something we talked about this week was about appeasing and appeasing appeasing and pleasing others um, and the fact that certainly somebody on the course said you know if you're in a having coffee with a friend or something and you kind of off they go oh, how are you and if you're having a bad sort of time and you offload you go home and you feel really guilty about it whereas if somebody else does it to me I kind of feel a bit privileged and think oh they felt you know they could talk to me and it's always the other way around and you know, if people buy me presents, I feel I feel like I owe them something. I have to kind of reciprocate somehow. It's not just a kind of, oh, it's just, oh, it's my birthday. Um, but I'm happy to buy things for people. And, you know, if I go out for lunch, I'm like, oh, no, I'll get it. I can't afford it any more than they can, but, oh, I'll get it. Oh, no, I'll drive. Oh, I'll... And it's this kind of constant, like, trying to do a bit more. Um, and that's, that's definitely come from um, my past um many examples but one of them i remember was at christmas and certainly as i got older christmas and birthdays for my mum i just kept trying to up the ante all the time and and and, and buy more and more for her to try and make her happy because she she never was <laughs> actually she just wasn't happy as a human um and i felt that i because as a child it was upside down it was you know her her mood and her happiness was based on how I was behaving it was upside down I've never liked that with my children um but as an adult it kind of exaggerated and I just felt if she was in a bad mood I thought I must be responsible and therefore it's my responsibility to try and make her happy um it's a, it was a huge weight to carry for for a lot of years but I remember when I was about um sort of 13 that sort of age I'd gone shopping with my friends in town and bought my mum a present from um it was her birthday that weekend from uh is it Elizabeth Duke at Argos the old sort of jewellery place and it was a, a velvet box of um a sort of assortment of earrings it had like eight gold earrings pairs of earrings in there and um you know, I really liked it. I thought it was a really grown-up present, and I was really pleased. And I thought, oh wow, she's going to love it because she obviously had her ears pierced. And I just thought it was a really grown-up thing to buy her. And I, you know, I was so excited. And on the morning of her birthday, I went into her room. She was sitting in bed with a cup of tea, and we, you know, we we're all there. And um, I gave her this present, and she opened it, and she just looked at it. She opened the box, just sort of looked at me, and went. Do you like it? And I said, yeah, 
yeah, I really like it a lot. I think it's really pretty. And she went, closed the box, she went, you have it then. And just handed it back. And I remember feeling gutted. I was like, Phew. I couldn't, I remember not, I remember feeling really confused. Thinking, well, well, I just didn't, couldn't work out what that was about. Um, and I think that was a significant point. Um, and then every birthday and Christmas after that, I mean, God, the effort me and my sister went to for her was just ridiculous at times. I mean, the cakes we made, you know, these sort of, well, Melissa particularly made these extravagant cakes and, um, you know, we bought her a, a sailing trip one once and she opened it and, and we, were, we was probably in our sort of early 20s, I think, something like that. And she opened this trip and it was a, she was going to crew, it was a crew um, ticket to be a crew member on this sailing yacht trip. And she just opened it and started to cry and went, I don't want to go on that. Why would I want to go and spend time with people I don't even know? And we were just like, Phew. I mean, I bought her an iPad one year and it was just ridiculous. So anyway, um, I think... It, it falls over into other relationships and um, I um, have been I went on a date last weekend first date in a year 18 months and um, it was it was nice ish <laughs> he was nice enough and um, we're now at second date and he's asked me to meet him on Thursday and I said what would you like to do and he's like well it's up to you and it's oh, I just want somebody to say, I'll pick you up and take you for a dinner. Um, anyway, he kept, he's come back again going, honestly, it's up to you. And I said, well, look, I'm I said, I'll be honest with you. I'm trying not to organise this. I organise everything in my life. I'm trying not to do that this, you know, this time. I'm trying not to. Can you just come up with something? Dinner out? Well, drink? Whatever you suggest. I, obviously, I won't be drinking. Um, and he's written back and said, oh, well, how about we go to my house? Um, and, well, anyway, the, the, the following words were clearly indicating that he's quite interested in something other than just a social. And I just thought, uh, bugger off. So I've just messaged him back and said, um, I'd, I'd forget about that if I were you. Perhaps focus on my brain and personality. Weird, I know, but hey, give it a go. And he hasn't responded, so I'm I'm now going to give it a bit of time and I'm going to just say to him, look, let's just leave it. We're on different wavelengths. But, do you know, this is different. This is a different me. I'm not saying I'd have gone round there and just jumped into bed with him, but I wouldn't have stood up for myself. I wouldn't have gone, actually, no, I'm worth more than that. Thank you. Um, I would have gone over and, and tried to kind of reach some sort of middle ground or I wouldn't want to upset him or um, all these different things about just trying to keep that other person happy and this time it's like I'm not angry about it I'm not wound up I'm just like it's not good enough it's just not good enough I'm a single mother I own my own house I run my own business I've got two great kids I've got a brain in my head you're not you're not reaching me so go and find some bimbo <laughs> somewhere else so anyway go me Thought I'd let you know, um, having a really good week, seven days of not drinking and I'm feeling really good and just um, enjoying this kind of clarity which is a combination of the drinking but also it, the, predominantly this course, um, it really is transformational um, and I hope that everyone who's doing it at the moment is feeling good um, and I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Thanks. Bye.